Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to the Cool Kids Lunch Table Podcast with PJ and Mike. Now, please find yourself a seat at their table. Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of the Cool Kids Lunch Table Podcast with PJ and Mike. I'm PJ. And I'm Mike. And today we are reviewing a number of things. We have uh, two albums that Mike's going to be reviewing. The new Rolling Stones album, Hackney Diamonds, and Blink-182's new album, One More Time. We're also going to jump into some comic books, which is my favorite uh, subject. We know that. Oh, yeah. We're going to talk about comic books that have to do with music. Uh, specifically, uh, I'll be talking about Archie Meets Kiss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so, folks, we always start off with like a childhood memory. So, Peach, I'm really curious for you. What was like an album release you were excited for as a teenager? What's like the next, like, there was a follow-up to a big album that you really right. liked? Was there a band or a, an artist? Um, so, well, there was one, and we've talked about how much I hate it, but I was very excited for St. Anger. Yeah, I, I know we go back to that all the time, but... <laughs> I knew you were going to say I know, because I, I, knew you were gonna say that. I wanted it to be good. I, I was really excited for new Metallica content, mm-hmm. and then we got new Metallica content, and it was not even a little bit good. So that was one that I really did look forward to, and I was, uh, I was let down by... And then the other one that's a big one uh, was an Offspring album. And oh. uh, I will get the name of it because I won't remember it. Was it Americana? Was that it was one? one after Americana, oh, okay. and that's why I can't remember the name of it. It was, uh, hold on, I'll look, I should I should have done research, but I didn't, but I will get it for you. Um, Conspiracy of One is oh, the one I was thinking of. Yep, yeah, yep, that, yep. I believe that was the one right after Americana. And... I, that was actually a pretty decent album. I don't have any complaints mm-hmm. about it. It wasn't as strong as Americana. Right. Um, but those were two bands that I liked a lot. Um, not the same genre, uh, you know, but still more of a rock vibe, an alternative vibe. Uh, and I, I was really looking forward to both of those. And one of them was not disappointing. And one of them was very disappointing. Right, right. That's funny you say because I picked two just kind of like that. One I was disappointed and one I loved um, or really enjoyed. Uh, the first one is I love their debut album, Linkin Park. Hybrid, oh, Theory, yeah, was, Hybrid Theory was great. I love that. Every track on there is a banger. It still yep. holds up. I always felt that Mike Shinoda, I think he actually writes a lot of majority of the songs. I never loved his rapping. I think that's the only part that, that has not aged well. Right. But that first album was a banger. And you know, I saw them I saw them uh, live twice. So when the next album, Meteora, I was really excited. I remember this like maybe the infancy of like, maybe not YouTube yet. But uh, remember you used to get CDs you can like put into your computer yes. and play like, yep. a, music like a video, video and stuff. Yeah, so absolutely. it was like the making of. It was called right. Meteor was the name of the album. I hated the album, man. Uh, it was terrible. It was me and my brother, Beatty. You know, she wanted to pass. Both guys were on the show period. We talked about 90s bands and Back to the Future just for our listeners to know. That was such a forgettable album because I can't think of a song from it right now. <laughs> the only ones I, I think... I could be wrong. I think it has Numb on it. I could be wrong. And okay. I think it has Breaking the Hat, which I do love that song. But I hated that album overall. I hated it. Hate it. I still hate it. And I, I, that killed me with that. I mean, that whole genre I get, of rock I can't get into anymore. It was very it much of a teenage It didn't thing. age well. It yeah. did not age well, that music. I don't know. I think it was a product of its time. Yeah. When it first came out, everyone loved it. Mm-hmm. Now, even the original album... Like yeah, it I sounds very. It does it sound like a, it's like a time. Oh, it's like a disco. Like oh, that's, that's a disco album. You can yeah. tell what era it came from. But it's a fun album. I can't deny that it's Hybrid Theory is a great album. Miara, not so, not so much. But the one I did really enjoy and anticipate was of course I picked Dream Theater. Right after their album Scenes from Memory, which is a concept album. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a story about going back in time right. basically to make things easy. So this next album was like a double album, but um, it was great. I mean, and I I saw them in person. I saw them in at Beacon Theater. You know, and anyway, it was a very special album, and it was great. And I just, I still love, that's why I'm talking about these two albums. I was really anticipating these, and these are two huge albums, PJ. And I'm just going to just jump right into it, okay? All right, so go for we're it. We're going to start with Blink-182. Yeah, I was going to so, say, I think we should start with Blink-182, because yeah. mm-hmm. I, I haven't listened to either one of them, but in my mind, I have an idea of what the new Blink-182 album is going to sound like. Yep. But I'm more interested in the uh, the Rolling Stones one, because it's yeah. been so long, yep. that I want I want to wait for that one. I want yes. that to be the main event. All right, all right. <laughs> so, I'll start this. okay, so for Blink, I think, I'm sure you know that Tom is back in yes. Blink. Okay, so, and I'm going to be truthful. Um... I really like Blink. I'm not going to say I love Blink. They're not my favorite bands, right. but I see them in concert. I think I reviewed them yep. uh, a few months ago. 
Um, we saw the cover band not that long ago. Yes, okay, that's he's right. right. Yep, I think all the small things that yep. they're called. And uh, my brother's a very huge Blink fan. So whenever I used to listen to Blink, I was really with my brother in the car and all that stuff. So that's not really that's not really know most of their material. But I'm just telling the folks at home is, and this isn't a, a diss against Matt Skiba, the guy who filled in. Mm -hmm. I didn't listen to those albums. I was just basically, you know, take off your pants and jacket, neighborhoods. They're self-titled. Yeah, I think I gave up right after Take Off Your Pants and Jacket. I think right. that was my last one. I love one. that. That's my favorite album. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. I, I love still that like album. Branch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, those first four are, are, great. are, are bangers. Yep. Um, but yeah, um, I'm, I'm going to go, folks, I'm going to do a track by track for both albums. I'm going to go kind of fast paced because I want to take too much time on these. But um, just I'm going to start with the pros of the Blink album. Um, and after I do track by track, I'll, I'll talk about the, the cons. But I just want to start with the pros. Like I said, this is Tom Returns to the Band, which was very, I think, special for everybody. You want the original crew. Okay, you want the original band. Um, this is a solid album overall. Um, you know, very good drums. You know, um, they have their sense of humor. They're going to have, like, their F-bombs, their masturbation jokes, all that stuff. That's all in there. You could tell this is heartfelt. Right. They put a lot of effort into it. I'm not going to give the rating yet. Okay. But, um... We'll go track by track. So it actually starts with Anthem Part 3. Um, this is one of my favorite songs of the album. Um, it just starts off really good. I really feel like, I'm not sure who wrote the lyrics, whether it's Tom or Mark. Maybe they both do it together. I don't know. But I feel lyrically, they use a lot of imagery, which is always what they've done. But I, right. I really feel like this album, um, I'm sure you're familiar with Dashboard Confessional. Yep. Mm -hmm. has a lot of that imagery, kind of romantic kind of stuff. And I know some people pick on, well, they're not 16 anymore. They can't write about high school. But, you know... That's what they do, you know. It's it's okay, you know, and that, I don't know if they don't really do so much of that on this album, but you get a lot of imagery. Right. And there is a lot of like uh, nostalgia. I'll say that. But just just real quick, I have a mm -hmm. question for you, because yeah. uh, you're a music guy. Yeah. When these bands come out with like Anthem Part Three, or right, the Unforgiven right. Part Forty Seven, yeah, or yeah, whatever, yeah. how do you feel about it? Like, what makes? I don't ever. Maybe it's just me. I don't connect the dots between these songs. They just call mm -hmm. it that, right? Yeah, I mean, sometimes they do have. There is a lyrical component, right. or maybe a music like motif they always do, and all stuff like that to kind of connect them all. Because sometimes I feel mm -hmm. like they just call it that to call it that. Is yeah, that, I think sometimes that's pr probably that's yeah. probably I just probably just do that. So, like but, on this one, when you listen to it, do you f did you hear or feel a connection to the other anthems, or is mm -hmm. it just they just call it that? Um, I think this one more with the drums with Travis's drums. Okay. I think he, you know, um, I don't want to say he plays the same fills. I feel like it's almost like maybe there's some of the same beats. I, I feel okay. like there's some co recalls or callbacks. Right. I should say. Okay, because that's but, maybe that's what I'm mm -hmm. missing. Maybe I just can't hear it because I'm not a musician. Yeah, yeah. So I can't mm -hmm. hear how it's connected. Sometimes I'm like, I don't understand why they called it this. Mm -hmm. I was just curious. Yeah, 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 that's a great question. But uh, this is like one of the best songs of the album. Um, the next one is called Dance with Me. Which was like another like kind of semi single was ever released on YouTube pretty early. This is a good song. It's very Green Day esque. It has very punky. Okay. You know, I feel like definitely with this album has a lot of going back to punk roots. Right. You know, so which is good. Uh, the next one is called "Fell in Love." I call this is kind of more back into that emo thing. I feel like a lot of Dashboard Confessional with a lot of the imagery lyrically. It also reminds me of the band Good Charlotte. You know, it's kind yeah, of catchy. Okay. Um, and um, it reminds me of, a, of another song from another band, Three Eleven. They had uh. a, their last album, they had a song called, um, actually I don't know what it's called. Eh, the hook is like Good Feeling, where it almost sounds very commercially. This is a very commercially song. You hear, you could picture it in a commercial, like, I feel like right. a cruise line, like Fell in Love, you know, and you hear this song playing on it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's one of those songs. So I can see fans maybe um, like saying, oh, it's kind of selling out or something like that, but it's a very radio, radio song. I mean, um, I think we've missed the point where we're supposed to come play about them selling out. Yeah, 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 <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. They did, but it's fine. Right. right. Mm -hmm. They all do. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> they want to make money. Right, okay. Of course they're going to sell out in the out business of making money. Of exactly. Mm -hmm. good for, and good for them for doing it. Yes. I don't mm -hmm. hate on bands that sell out as long as the music is good. Yep, I agree. Mm -hmm. uh, the next one's called Terrified. And uh, it's another solid song. Uh, Travis has a nice, uh, has a nice snare groove. Like you know, he comes from a uh, a marching band background, right. so um, a lot of that kind of rolls. Um, the next one's "More More Time." This is the ballad, the one that came out. I love this song. One of my favorites. Um, really reminds me of reminds me of you two, PJ, uh, because oh, no. this song is about. Uh, then coming back together as a band, and I don't know if you know you know the song "One" by U2, right? I do. Okay, yeah. that song is about them. They were actually going to break up. Well, I wish a, they wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> so I couldn't wait to actually bring up that point. Uh, but I now I don't want to hear it. Right, but this is a good song though. One more time is a great ballad. Uh, the next one's called "More Than You Know." This is another. Uh, I think right now a new fan favorite. Travis plays a lot of double bass in right. this, which is pretty cool. 
Uh, the next one after that is called Turn This Off, which is like a goof song. So if you remember, uh, like, it's Christmas Eve and I only ran after yeah. it. It's kind of like that same okay. kind of vibe. Um, the next one's called We Were Young. I said it's just a great song in my notes. It's another good one. Another good one, solid one. This next song is my least favorite. It actually was their first single for this new album. It's called Edging. I just don't... Uh, for me, I just hate these kind of drum beats. Yeah, I just find them boring. It's like the... You know, are you familiar with the song Holiday by Green Day? It's like... Yeah. boom, duck -a -doom, yep. duck -a -ding, duck -a I hate that kind of drum beat. I just don't... I'm not looking for technical crazy shit. Right. I just don't find it pleasing to my ear. Okay. I feel like the songs... I mean, that's a very common beat. I just don't like that beat at all. And it's funny because I said I don't like that song by like Green Day. And Green Day just came out with a new song or album. They're promoting it. The new song is called American Dream. The American Dream is killing me. And they play the same exact beat as Holiday. Oh, my the God. Edging, and I can't stand that drum beat. I just can't stay. So, just about Green Day real quick. Yeah. I, and, again, I, I don't – I like – Mm -hmm. Old Green Day, classic Green Day. Yeah, yeah. I find every time Green Day does something new, I like them less. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's just Ow. every yeah. time they come out with something new, I'm like, let me guess, mm -hmm. it's it's gonna be preachy, and it is. And right. it's just like mm -hmm. I feel like they lost their edge. Yeah, I mean, I think American Idiot is a great album. That album is is great. The middle bullshit. That album is <laughs> cooking. Every every song in there is a, is a hit. I mean, that's amazing. You know, I think, you know, their first album's like, really, I think, more of a compilation. 1,039 1, Smooth Out Slappy Hours. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they had Kerplunk, which I love that album. Then Dookie, of course, right. Masterpiece. And then Insomniac. Then I think Nimrod. Then I'm, then I'm a little shaky at that point. Yeah, I, I kind of lost stuff at the Insomniac. I think, because I think once we get after that, I, that's when I start to say, oh, I like this one a little bit less. Yeah. Oh, I like this one a little bit less. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like this one a little less. Almost. Maybe they maybe they won't wake me up when September ends. <laughs> I don't know. I don't <laughs> Maybe when September ends, they're the reason I'm still sleeping. I don't know. I'm curious. Do you feel the same way about Weezer? Yeah. I mean, I don't listen to them as much anymore. I don't know if they still have new stuff coming out. Yeah. They kind of lost I, Yeah. I, mean, I love them. Weezer's first album as an absolute masterpiece. But after that, every like you said, every album liked them less and less yeah, and less. Yeah. I, I hate mm. when that happens with bands that I like. The next album Man. comes out and I'm like, why mm. do I like them again? When you start to question why you like the band in the first place, that, that's, yeah. that's mm -hmm. a problem. Yep. Yep. But, uh, yeah, I don't like this song. I don't think it's a bad song. I just don't like it. That brings right. it to my ear. And I think it's really, it is one of the weaker songs. The next one is called, uh, Don't You, Don't, Don't You Want, what, yeah, I don't know what I even wrote. Don't, I can't read my own handwriting. You don't, you don't get what you want. I don't know. Whatever it is. It's a very, like, they're trying to do, like, almost an Adam song type vibe. It's uh, fine. You know what? I was going to ask about that. Are there any songs like that? That is not my favorite of their songs, by the way. Really? Okay. It's I not a bad song. song. Mm -hmm. I just find like, I here's the thing: when it first came out, right? I I think it's fine. It comes yeah. out, and you're like, oh, that's like an emotional song. It's a yeah, powerful yeah, yeah. song, whatever. I think songs like that don't age well for me because hmm. now I feel like it's just a performance. Right, right. And it doesn't have the emotion behind it anymore. Right, right, and right. And now it's become such a big hit and everyone loves it. And it's like, right. oh my God, that song, it speaks to me. That's me. Uh, That's me, man. <laughs> no, it isn't. It's them. <laughs> and it's like, it's over. But now you're always chasing that again. Yep. I have to come up with something else that makes people want to kill themselves. Like, right, I don't right. know. Like, <laughs> it, right? Like, that's what it feels like. They don't right. age well for me, those kind of right. songs. Well, so, this song isn't bad. And, and I know, with it, look, you got to always kind of try to, how to write, write a ballad for an album. And the chorus is bland. The cor the verse is good. But um, I guess my pet peeve with any band or artist is when they try to, like, you know, redo what they did in the right. past. Like, it, you know, it seems somewhat forced. Um, but moving right along, they have a song called Blink Wave, which is... Heart, uh, kind of channeling like new wave, so it has a lot of synth, synth okay. uh, synthesizers. I like this one a lot, actually. Kind of reminds me of uh, their song from uh, should be from "Take Off Your Pants and Jacket." Always love mm -hmm. that song, and the guitars remind me of like the band The Cure. You know, that very like oh, clean, right. like uh, echoey, a lot of reverb kind of sound. So I like that. I picture Robert Smith, the singer of The Cure, right. singing that song. They have a song called "Bad News." It's okay, nothing to uh, uh, you know. It's fine. Next one is called Hurt. Not it's not a cover of Nine Inch Nails, or <laughs> it's a really an interlude, it, and uh, it reminds me of, believe it or not, YouTube. Oh, great! It, <laughs> sounds it has like, like, I like this album. It sounds like a, a lot of like you know, uh, like delay guitars, right. that kind of stuff. It's How interlude. are they vocally? Still sounds good, or yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. Yep. Not mm -hmm. struggling to hit them notes. No, okay. I mean you know they you know, they sing with like you know like uh, like Tom like oh my god like. Uh, 
Um, oh my god. They always How's just sound it? whiny a little bit. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because I, I mean, like, they call it, like, head voice, where you really sing it from, like, your head, not right. from your tummy. Right. You know? And they're, like, punkers, you know? So it's, like, like, uh, like, right. they like, that kind of, like, singing, right. it's, like, shouting in tone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, like, very much, like, Mark, and then, you know, Tom, you know, like, come on the air, like, it's yeah. really more of, like, a... Like an impersonation. Yeah. You know, they can't sing like Sinatra or something like that. They're, they're not that they're, kind of vocals. They're no, they're not. Band. But I was just curious if they still have that yeah. same sound yeah, or yeah, if yeah, like, yeah. they just yeah. can't do it anymore. Yeah, they do some nice harmonies. Okay. They straight up. It's fine. Yep. And that's, they're doing classic yeah. stuff. Um, the next one's called Turpentine. You know, I think a lot of fans are going to like this one. Uh, the next one is called uh, Fuckface, which All is right. kind of like <laughs> very thrash punk. Okay. I feel like maybe they were channeling some maybe Nirvana. They have another song called uh, second to last one is called Other Side. It's fine. And then Childhood, the, the last one, trying to be the epic. Um, and it's fine. It's fine. So, long story short, I gave this album a 7 to 7.5. That's not bad. It's not bad. It's fine. Do I think you're going to always listen to it like like on repeat, like Take Off Your Pants or Enemy of the State or Dude Ranch? Probably not. Um, I still think... The ones I just mentioned are better. I do. I re-listened to um, Neighborhoods. That's a very underrated album. That's a very good album. Um, I would choose that over this album. This isn't their worst thing. I don't know the ones with Matt Skiba, but this is, album is fine. So I think it's it's a very admirable comeback album. I think they have more to put out that could be better than this, right. but it's it's fine for a comeback. It's fine, you know. Do we think there's going to be more albums, or is oh, this a yeah, swan yeah, song yeah. kind of yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is I, a comeback album. Mm -hmm. I, I like Blink-182 well enough. I don't have anything bad about against them where I say I won't listen yeah. to them. It's not like it's a U2 thing where I hate them and I won't listen. Right, right. I, I think <laughs> a lot of their songs on their old albums are catchy, but they fall into the same trap for all these kind of bands. And and I have, I don't know what it is. I have a problem with, uh, with things that I interpret as whiny. And I find yeah. like a lot of their songs are just like them whining and bitching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think I, it's I think I think it's the type of music that it is. But after a while, I can't hear that anymore. I'm like I don't care about right. it. I, I think I think that also comes with their their vocal range. You know, that's right. what they're capable of singing. Right. And I also think punk is like punk is very like punk is limited. Long story right. short, that's no diss against the genre. That's it is what no, it is. No, it's not that's against the, the genre. genre. I mean, there are bands mm -hmm. that have been very successful and then make great music. It's just, I find I have a, a limited threshold yep. for how much I can listen to that kind of music before I'm like, I'm tired of this. It's draining mm -hmm. my soul to yep. listen to these people bitch at another mm -hmm. song. Yeah. Like, I'm a big metal guy, and I like the anger that's behind it, right. and I can mm -hmm. listen to that for a while. Or you go back and you listen to like a classic type mm -hmm. of music, mm -hmm. whether it's a Motown or oh, if yeah. it's a Sinatra, mm -hmm. and you can listen to that over and over again, Right. and, and it, doesn't, it doesn't just like grate on your nerves, but I find that after a while, punk... It's just like, oh my god! Yeah, it's not, it's pleasing, just, to it's not pleasing after a while. It's like the yeah. tone of it, yeah. the the sound, the whininess, the lyrics. After a while, I'm like, I don't want to hear this anymore. Mm -hmm. I have like a four to five song limit before right. I got to change the, yep. the, the channel. Yep, yep, yep. I agree. Mm -hmm. And my last things I just want to talk about the album with this is some of the negatives. Like I said, this is a final, but the negative is I actually think Travis, even though he's an amazing drummer, I think he almost over drums. He's really? like overplaying, where it almost this, this album feels at times very busy. There's so mm. much going on where you have he's playing all these crazy right. beats and fills in the middle of the song, and you almost there's no space in the song, which I think sometimes, like you said, for like I almost feel like you almost have to listen to this album into two. It's only like maybe like 40, 45 minutes, fifty minutes long. But you but need you, a break. You almost need like after five, six songs, you want to take a break because it's it's very busy. Believe it or not, right. even though it's a three piece band, a lot of shit going on, um, and I, which is a nice kind of segue because. I think about the drummer, well, he passed away now, but Charlie Watts from the Stones, mm -hmm. he was a jazz drummer. He's a jazz drummer. He could play crazy crap. You know, he, we, we could when he was alive, you know? Right. Um, but when he played the Stones, he's not going to do jazz beats. Because <laughs> that's not what they're doing. Exactly. Right. So he always played to the service of the song. It's going to make the song best. So I really feel like Travis actually had needed to take a step back at some points because he's just, it makes the songs sound very, very busy. It's like, and, you know, it's a lot going on. But, um, like I said, it's fine overall, um, and I do feel what you just said too before, uh, PJ, is like, I think this a album, as much as it is pleasant to listen to overall, it does lack a little bit of, like, attitude. Right. You know what I mean? There's not much attitude in it. I think there's heartfelt in it, for sure, but not much attitude. Mm. Like, you hear, like, like, uh, like, all the small things, or like, damn it, you hear the attitude in it. Not, you know, that must have to be a teenager again, right. but there's no... 
There's no attitude in it. But yeah, now Peter, I'm really excited about this next thing. Is uh, yeah, so the this Rolling one, Stones. This one. Um, mm -hmm. When was their last new album before this? So, which is a good question. So, if I remember correctly, the last album they put out technically is Blue and Lonesome, which is all covers, though. Right. It was all blues cover. Um, I actually really like that album. I actually won a Grammy, but it was all covers. I don't mind covers. They their early shit right. was all covers mainly. But uh, for me, um, you know, I didn't love it. I just thought it was fine. You know, huh, but their last album of all real material was like 2002, 2003. It was a while ago. Mm -hmm. Well, I know they, I mean, they're influenced by a lot of, of blues oh, music. Yeah. Uh, oh, Howlin' yeah. Wolf is like a big influence on them. Yeah, and yeah. I'm a big Howlin' Wolf fan. Mm. So, uh, but you didn't know that I one. did not know you that. You didn't know that. I, I yeah, enjoy yeah. Howlin' Wolf. Uh, oh, nice. So I, I know that that's like an influence of theirs. Yes. So I, um, mm -hmm. But I, uh, I was just curious. I, I, don't, I don't follow them as closely as you do. I listen to the classics more yep. than anything newer. Mm -hmm. But I felt like I haven't heard a new song of theirs in a while except for the one you just sent me right uh, not that long ago which i think mm -hmm. was part of the, this album yep 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 mm -hmm. uh so i'm gonna start by saying this yes those who've been listening for a long time i'm a gigantic rolling stones fan so i'm gonna treat try to be uh not biased i'm gonna do my best um anyway yes this is hack me diamonds um i'll just I'm gonna start with some positives all i gotta say these guys are in their 80s. They're, Mick Jagger's like 81 or 80. I think Keith's going to turn 80 this December. Ron Wood, the other guitar player, he's, he's like 79. And all I can say is just the fact that they put out an album and it's rocking, it's incredible. You know yeah, I mean? absolutely. All I can say, like, you know, their lead single, which we'll start off with, is uh, Angry. Um, and all I can say, this is a great, great song. Uh, has a lot of energy. This is the first single. I really enjoyed um, when they were promoting this, they, had, they were like on Jimmy Fallon. They went to like London to like right. promote it, and um, the music video like was like emotional because they did like AI where like you have Sydney Sydney Sweeney, is that her name? Yeah. You know this bombshell like in a convertible, they're going yep. down like Sunset Boulevard, and all the bull, all the uh, billboards has like the Stones from like each era when they were like in the sixties, seventies, eighties. Right. So it's like almost like a. Like a timeline, but the song is great. You, know, yeah, you nice, sent me the video song. for that, and I yeah. and I really enjoyed the video for a number of reasons. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, she's <laughs> one of those reasons is Sydney yeah. Sweeney was in it. Yeah, but um, it's a great video, yeah. like a timeline of their career it was yep. pretty freaking cool. Um, but yeah, great song, and I got also mentioned too in in terms of this album, the producer had a, did a great job, Andrew Watt. I don't know what other artists he worked with. I right. know he works in the industry. He's like a pop artist, but the guy, I'm assuming, is a big Stones fan or. Or a fan of, of the 60s music because, right. like, he knew how to keep the. He knew what makes the Stones the Stones and also, like, make the album sound fresh, right. like today's. So, But it, it doesn't stray from their normal sound, right? Nope. It's still their sound, yep. their style. Yep. It's, it's not like yep. they decide they need to sound like, uh, like I don't know, some yep. whatever. Yep. Like Post Malone. It's yep. not no, their impression of Post Malone. Exactly. Or yep. And you could see, like, and going to, like, I'll just, say, I'll, I'll just say right off the bat, this album is very impressive, you know? Um, the next song is called Get Close. I don't know what to say. It, it, it reminds me of Third Eye Blind, you know? Like, hmm. they're not trying to write a book. You could feel, like, I can picture, uh, what, Stephen Jenkins, right? Right. Singing this kind of song. It's not a ballad. It's just kind of like a nice rocker song. It's good. I, I, it's great. The next one after that is, is called Depending on You. This song's very big into country. Country mm -hmm. blues has a country vibe. You're going to like this. I can picture... I wouldn't be surprised, like, years down the line, there's a lot of artists who cover these songs. Right. Because they're that kind of, like, well, that well-written. Mm -hmm. I can picture Darius Rucker singing this song. Okay. Like, a deep voice. Right. Really carry. I'm a fan of his, so. Yep, I can picture him singing that song. The next song is actually, I think, is the, my only, I guess, real negative on the album is, I think this is the weakest song. It's called Bite My Head Off, which is funny because this is the one that has Paul McCartney on it. <laughs> um, just because I don't really like lyrically. Right. And it sounds, it's really more of a punk song. I just, am I... Look, I wasn't there when they were making this. I feel like, you know, this is a story how they got Paul there, and they were basically recording at the same time, the same studio. So, hey, let's just jam together. So it sounds like they just came in together, they recorded it literally in two days, and that was it. But it's recorded really well. It's not a bad song at all, really. It's just I feel the, like it's I'm the less interested in Paul McCartney playing with the Stones. <laughs> like, I just... I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I You have the Stones on this side, and then you have the yep. Beatles on this side, and yep. I don't need there to be... Any right. cross pollination, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's funny because uh, my favorite Beatles are actually John and Ringo. You okay. know, so uh, I always think of George Carlin. He had this joke. <laughs> he said the the wrong two Beatles died. <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, 
But just for just for random facts, people think also oh, the first time the, the Beatles worked with the Stones. That's not true. They wrote the uh, the Stones first. Like they gave him a hit. They wrote him a song years ago. It's called "I Want to Be Your Man." You know, mm-hmm. which is definitely a Beatles song. You could feel it. Yep. But the Stones wrote songs, and they had the Beatles on there uh, from the '67. Uh, uh, they weren't released as they were released on their album Sat- "Satanic Majesty's Request." It's a song called "We Love You." You, you hear backup and uh, you know, backup vocals, and the song "Dandelion." You hear them vocally too okay. uh, on there. But bite my head off, probably the weakest song for sure. This next song I absolutely love. One of my favorites called "Whole Wide World." This reminds me of the Killers, that band. Really? Who sings like, uh, you know, Mr. Brightside. Yeah. Like, just that kind of rocking. Huh. Mick Jagger really, uh, really uh, uh, exaggerates his British accent. Like, he kind of talks. Right. Like, in the song. You know, not rapping, but like, really like, that whole thing. Ron Wood, the guitar player, like, lead guitar player. Awesome guitar solo. I mean, this guy's 790 years old. This guy's killing it. Um, the next song is called Bre- uh, Dreamy Skies. Uh, this is more of a country one. It really reminds me of one of their older songs from like what was this? What time that? One? Uh, 1975, "Short and Curlies" uh, from the album "It's Only Rock and Roll." This is like the country version of that song. Mm-hmm. So that's like people like me die hard. Still so like, oh, I pick it. I can pick it up, you know. But <laughs> it's a really good song. though. It's a really uh, nice sly guitar. These next two. Have these are old songs when Charlie Watts the drummer was alive. Right. So these are kind of old tracks that they kind of revitalized. You know, they took out of the vault to work on them. The first one's called "Mess It Up." These two songs, these are back-to-back songs with Charlie Watts on them. They had the most groove. Not surprisingly, we got the original mm-hmm. drummer on them. Yeah, "Mess It Up" is really good. Reminds me of uh, believe it or not, "Move Like Jagger" from like Room Five. It just has a lot of groove. These songs have tons of groove. Great stuff. The next song, one of my favorites. My personal favorite uh, is called Live by the Sword. This has basically the, almost all the original stones on it. Um, you have Mick Jagger, Keith Richards, Ron Wood. They brought back the bass player who's still alive. He's like 84 years old, Bill Wyman. Hmm. He retired from the band like in 1991, right. 92. Um, and you had Charlie Watts. So they, you know, the producer brought Bill Wyman back. Like, hey, you, can you jam with this one song? So it's kind of like... Like a reunion exactly, of Exactly. Yeah. You know, an honor. You know, Charlie, huh. which is great. Love this song. Elton John plays piano in it. Wow. And uh, I really feel like this would be a song on their album, Some Girls from 78, that has like Beast of Burden and Miss You. Really has a lot of groove. The next one is called Driving Too Hard. Country vibes. I, like I said before, I feel like more of the country songs, I could picture a, someone covering the country stuff. So I could picture like Leanne Rhyme, Shina Twain singing these. Solid song. The next one, they always try to, especially later years, always have like one Keith song. Right. Keith sings the song. Beautiful song. It's a nice ballad. It's called Tell Me Straight. It's really good. This next one is probably one of the most popular songs right now, probably the most popular, and probably is the best song on the album, uh, Sweet Sound of Heaven. This is like with Lady Gaga right. in it. Um, Not a fan of her. You know, I, I always tell you this, I'm kind of like love and hate. Some songs are loved by her, some I hate, but I right. gotta say, her voice sounds amazing on this okay. song. Because my brother hates uh, Lady Gaga, but maybe Mick Jagger said, "Look, you got to do it like this because <laughs> her voice sounds right. lovely." You can't, you can't. At only one point you kind of say, "Okay, I can hear Lady Gaga," but if you didn't, she did that one little note thing that she normally does. Right. You wouldn't even think it's her. She totally okay. sings differently. Yeah, but, I'm not a fan of her. Yep, yeah, but this song is great. You have Stevie Wonder on uh, like the p- piano keyboards kind of thing. Um, Man, they really brought out all their friends, huh? Yep, yep. And you have uh, their drummer now who they play with, Steve Jordan. Um, he has a nice nice little breakdown groove when they do the breakdown. Like It's a seven-minute song. So I Oof. think in the single version, it's only five minutes. But in the extended in the version, version the, the album, full album version, like you can feel when they kind of go into a right. jam off. He plays a nice little tasty groove. And then they will end off the album uh, with the song that gave them their name, uh, Rolling Stone Blues by Muddy Waters. And it's just Keith and Mick on... P- on a uh, guitar harmonica right. huh. and um the last verse of the song uh the lyrically it goes like um my son's gonna be born a rolling stone so it sounds from what i heard from the radio like um because one day when the album came out yeah they were promoting it they did like a I think it was on WBAB or 104.3. They actually had the Stones. I don't know if it's pre-recorded. They did it. They played the entire album on the radio. Wow! And each, between each song, they would talk about it, which was pretty I cool. I like when they do that kind yeah. of stuff. Oh, 
so good. And uh, there that's was... the kind. This is the kind of band that I want them to go on Howard Stern. Yes. And I yep. want him to do a long form interview while they play the music and yep. talk about it. Because mm -hmm. Howard would be great at interviewing this yep. band. And yep. I think that that's the kind of person that, that I would want to hear mm -hmm. interview the Stones. He recently just interviewed uh, Keith Richards. Yeah. You know, I, I saw clips on YouTube. Yeah, I saw a couple of clips. I didn't see the whole thing, but yeah, I don't think there's any performances. No, no, no. I like when he has bands in the oh, studio. Yeah. Those uh, are I know the we've best. said it before, but their sound guy <laughs> is great. Yeah. It's like a live performance, but it sounds like it's a studio album. Yep. They're so good. Yep. They're excellent. And, and Howard's interviews with all of these bands, they're, yep. he doesn't get the credit he deserves because everyone still considers him a shock drop from the 90s, but yep. I, his interviews, I would love to get a, a big time band like the Stones mm -hmm. in that studio. Have them mm -hmm. perform. Have them talk about the songs, how they wrote it. Howard gets the best out of people. I would love to hear an interview like that. Yep, I totally agree. I would pay to watch an interview like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I feel like with this song ending the album, Rolling Stone Blues, and not to be morbid, like if this is their last album, I mean, these guys are very old, you know? But this is their last album. Not only do they end it off on a, a, a spectacular high note, but ending the last, like of their entire catalog, the last song is their, like, basic song that gave them their name. It's That's like, a good way to go out. Yep. It's poetic. Yes, and my yeah. dad even says like almost like my father's a giant fan. He says like it's almost like a signature on a painting. You yeah. know, like oof. So long story short, I'm saying it's completely un really, truthfully unbiased. This is this album is like a nine to nine point five out of ten. It's exquisite. I anyone would enjoy this. A Beatles fan, anyone who's straight into straight up rock, it's pleasant to listen to. My only negative my only negative PJ is they got you know, they, they have all the original members back. I mean, Charlie Watts, God bless him, has right. passed away. But they brought Bill Wyman back to play bass. People forget this member, Mick Taylor. He was the mm -hmm. guy after Brian Jones. They right. fired him and then he passed away. But Mick Taylor was a guitar player. He's on their, people say, the best catalog of, you know, Brown Sugar, all those, you know, Sticky Fingers. Yep. They don't have him on there. They didn't bring him back. Yeah. You know, so I don't know. Like, that would have been perfect. If Is there had... some sort of bad blood there I don't or anything? think so. Because, oh, right. uh, you know, believe it or not, 10 years ago, they had the, the, the Stones 50th anniversary. <laughs> and this year, if they go on tour, because there's a good chance they might, right. like a short tour, maybe like a 10 city tour in the no, States. they're not doing a worldwide tour. No, no. But uh, they're going to do the 60th. But I'm saying 10 years ago, they had Mick Taylor come out and play like two songs with them. <laughs> you know? Right. So I can't believe uh, they didn't. Invite him, him maybe something happened, maybe he didn't want to, I have no clue. But if he would have been on here, they would have made the album perfect. But there is really big Stones fans out there. If you want to hear Mick Taylor uh, with Ron, what at least trading off some licks, um, they put out a, an unreleased stuff. Uh, and one of the songs called Living in the Heart of Love. The two guitar souls is Mick Taylor, Ron Wood going back All and right. forth. So anyway, definitely recommend the Stones album as a super fan and as a completely, objectively excellent album. Excellent. I might listen to it on the way home tonight. All right. Yeah, you're going to like it. I'm it's sure completely, I will. Completely pleasing to the ear. Mm -hmm. All right. What is your favorite Stone song all time? You have to pick one yeah, song. Yeah, I got it. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's uh, and it's from Sticky Fingers, okay. uh, 71, Sway. It's right. so good. It's like one of their, it's probably their heaviest song. Mm -hmm. Lyrically, the way Mick Jagger sings it, the guitar solo is epic. It's a beautiful song. And, uh, they never, they, when I saw them for the first time in 2005, they played that on their tour, and they're like, we haven't played a song since 71 Live. So when I saw when I saw that, I crapped my pants. Right. You know what I mean? I was flipping out, and uh, I saw that show with my dad and my brother and Rossi, okay. the guest we had on two, uh, or last, last week. Last week, yeah. Yep. He last went to that two episodes. He went to that show, too, and he called me during the show going, dude, they're playing <laughs> Sway! So... Yeah, awesome. check out that song. All it's right. really good. Mm -hmm. Really heavy as hell. Heavy, heavy. I mm -hmm. would have to pick between two. Mm -hmm. uh, Beast of Burden and uh, You Can't Always Get What You Want. Oh, those beautiful are my, Those would be my top two from them. Mm -hmm. I'd probably lean towards You Can't Always Get What You Want. Yeah, that's a uh, classic. Classic. I mean, classic. The choir, everything. Yep. But PJ, um, I want, we wanted to talk. I, want, I asked you because when I told PJ when we were about to record this, I said, you know, I want to talk about the Stones and Blink and I want you to talk about some music comic books. So PJ did some research. But PJ, I also have some things I want to ask you about some music comic books. Sure. But uh, you go first. I want to hear about so, <laughs> your Kiss album. So, I mean, uh, <laughs> the, so we wanted to talk about music and we wanted to talk about a comic book that relates to music. And there were a few options and I narrowed it down to two. But I decided I would read bef uh, this morning before uh, recording tonight so it would be fresh in my mind. Archie meets Kiss. Wow. So four, the, I think they might have done this more than one time. I was talking about the first time they released this. Uh, it was a couple of years ago. Uh, I'd be hard pressed to tell you the exact year. I want to say it's around 2012. I, I don't. I, that's my roundabout guess. 
It's around Archie number 628, give or take. All right. Um, the, I, mean, I said just moments ago that I don't get mad at a band for selling out. <laughs> There's a caveat to that, and that caveat is Kiss. Right. Because those motherfuckers will put their name on anything to yes. make a dollar. Yes. They'll like they'll sell you Kiss branded toilet paper. They don't give a shit. Oh yeah, yeah. They want to make mm -hmm. a dollar. So I'm like, I can't imagine it. What this book is going to be about? Mm -hmm. I'll give you a brief synopsis. Yes, I'm to, really curious. Yeah, mm -hmm. you should be because it's a. <laughs> so, uh, for those of you who don't know, um, Sabrina the Teenage Witch is actually an Archie Comics character. You may not know that. I did not the know that. The face that you're giving me right what? now makes me think you don't know that. Yes. She is part of the Archie family, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Wow. Yes. She started off in that universe as a comic book character and then spun off into TV shows and cartoons. Holy and smokes. Uh, the Netflix show, The Chilling right. Adventures of Sabrina on Netflix, which is a really fun show. But yes. So the book starts off with uh, Archie and Betty and Veronica and Jughead and uh, Reggie. The whole Archie gang right. and, and Sabrina, the teenage witch, they are in a treehouse, which is their supernatural clubhouse, I guess, if you right. want to call it. Mm -hmm. And Sabrina, the teenage witch, is trying to put a protection spell on Riverdale to protect against monsters. Right. And uh, I think it was Betty or Veronica, one of the two, I, you know, they... They felt like they weren't being included, so they took, they left, and her and Reggie left, and they said, we're going to be a better witch than Sabrina, and they learned how to do a spell. It's very goofy. Right. Um, if you're not familiar with the Archie comics, and, and you're only familiar with the uh, the CW Riverdale show or right. the, the Netflix Sabrina show, um, there's a very, like, I don't want to say adult-oriented, but they're... They're, they're not. It's not the vibe of the comic book by yeah, any stretch. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the comic books are very goofy, lighthearted. There's not a lot of darkness or serious to them. So it is a very goofy storyline. So they decide they're going to do learn their own spells to to show that they're better than Sabrina. They uh, they screw up their spell and it brings monsters into Riverdale. Wow! And it's uh, a, a wolf man, a vampire, uh, Frankenstein. I think there. Might, I think maybe a mummy might have been the other one. Right. Uh, and. And they're turning everyone in uh, Riverdale into zombies, but not like flesh brain eating zombies. Not like that. They're um, they're boring. They're making the town boring. So these are just zombies that are not. They're not fun. They're taking the fun out of Riverdale. Right. And and they come through a portal. And mm -hmm. the only other people that come through the portal are the people that can stop these monsters from ruining Riverdale. And who are they? But Kiss. Kiss. And uh, and they come through the portal, and they don't use their names. They're not, you know, it's not Gene, it's not Ace or oh, whoever. Okay, okay. It's uh, it's the demon, the Star Child, the space, uh, right, no, the space man rather, the space right. man. Mm -hmm. um, what is it? The demon? The sp what are they? Uh, I don't know what they call. I know Peter Chris. The cat. The cat. I don't, yeah. I don't know. Whatever they are. That's that's what they refer to themselves as. <laughs> space cat. Space cat. Whatever. They don't <laughs> no. have their actual names, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, and they have to. So they have to rock out. To, to uh, defeat, to beat the, the, defeat the, the monsters. The monsters. And then Sabrina the Teenage Witch gets uh, captured. They need to save her so she can use a spell to reverse everything. It is one of the goofiest comic book storylines I've ever read. All right. It is one of maybe the worst comic books I've ever read. Um, it was, and I say that I'm not a huge Archie fan. In right. general, that's not my that's not my comic book right. choice. I know there are people who have a, a, an affinity for it. I appreciate those characters. I appreciate right. what they have the longevity mm -hmm. of them, right? And the fact that it's still being published today, those books. But it's not for me. If you're interested in that kind of stuff and you want to buy um, Archie meets Kiss, come on down to 2055. Yeah, right, 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 we right. have them, but I don't recommend them. Um, I'm curious why. Look, I don't know. Maybe I'm assuming Kiss. Maybe they approach Kiss like, oh, we're going to make a comic book out of you. I'm surprised they picked Archie of all of, of all the you things. You think they want to maybe work with maybe like a Deadpool? Like, something, I don't know, something you that think has, like, maybe something more, more demonic or, yeah, or metal. Right. Hard. Exactly. Yes. They went exactly. with Archie, which exactly. is the strangest thing. But I think, here's the thing. About, like a Scooby-Doo kind of thing. Yeah. I, you know, like a mystery. They got to join with Kiss. I'm sure yeah. maybe there is episodes of Scooby-Doo. They join Kiss to fight people. I Who think, knows? I, I have no uh, knowledge of this, but... I think it's because there is always, dis despite it not being the most popular book, a steady sales for that book. It's 
people who collect Archie collect Archie. You know what mm. I mean? So you're not, you're not putting out um, a Kiss comic book that's just called Kiss sitting on a shelf. That's right. an, and here's what I think, trying to think the way that maybe Gene thinks, is he always wants to make money. He always wants to say that he did something successful. Yeah. And maybe they thought, if we just make a Kiss comic book, the only people that will buy it are Kiss, are, fans. Are Kiss fans. And then maybe it's not super successful and they can't tout having put out a successful right. comic book. But with something like Archie, right. people who Brand buy name. Right. 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 I, right. I, I, that's the only thing I could think of. Um, there are... It was... I'm reading the book. The artwork is... I was about to ask you that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you've seen the Archie comics yep, and yep, cartoons. Yep. Mm -hmm. They always look the same mm -hmm. for the most part, right? It doesn't matter what artist they get. They have to emulate that style. Mm -hmm. They've had a few books here and there not connected to the main books where it looks different and they make it look a little more uh, edgy or just right. modern. Mm -hmm. This book didn't do that. So, you're getting classic Archie cartoony, right. bubbly art. Right. Kiss. Oh, Kiss looks like that. Wow. Yeah, Kiss looks like that. Huh. It's, uh, I gotta see it. I'm really curious. I'll show it to you. I have it here, so I'll show it to you. Perfect. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like something you would expect Kiss to put their name on. It doesn't feel metal. It doesn't feel heavy. It doesn't feel like a rock and roll thing. Yeah. It feels, it feels childish and goofy, which is what those books are supposed to feel like. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't feel like what Kiss is supposed to feel like. And... Mm -hmm. There are other uh, the other book I was thinking about uh, reading and jumping into was the Slayer comic because it's called Slayer Relentless or mm, Relentless, right? Um, and it's based on the music videos and and it has that edge to it and it has a a modern dark edgy feel to the artwork. The storyline is you know it's metal, it's Slayer, it's the devil, it's right, attack. right, right, right. And when you read it, you're like that's Slayer. Yep, it's yep. Slayer in a comic book form, right? Right. And then you read this book and you're like, all right. I don't know if you're a huge Kiss fan or you're not. No, no. I mean, I like Detroit Rock City as much as the next guy. The movie or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the movie. Movie's great. Movie's great. Yeah. But uh, how much music are we really listening? I don't, we might just be too young to care. Yeah. I was going to go and see that because they're supposedly on their next last, their, yeah. their, their, last their tour. Their most current last tour. Right. And I was like, maybe I'll go. And then I saw the prices of the tickets. I'm like, nah, not right. for them. Um, but, you know, I have a general appreciation and respect no, for what I they've do. done. Yeah. Mm hmm this feels yeah. like such a cash grab. And how much cash could they have been grabbing? Right. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so after I, I read that, I said, well, this is disappointing. I, I want to be able to talk about something more positive. Yep. Um, so I, I dug back into the back issue bin, and I said, what else do I have? This isn't, it's not comic books about the band or, or inspired by a band. But Gerard Way... You're familiar? No. Uh, Gerard Way is the... Uh, he's, he's the part of a very, very popular band. And when I, it's... Uh, you really don't know the... Wow. Oh, is that the guy from Mel Metalopolis? I can't pronounce it. No, he's then. the lead vocalist of My Chemical Romance. Oh! I, was just, I, I just shocked that you didn't know that because no, I thought... I know. I did not, not know that guy's name. Fan, I, I, know Mike, I know the band. Name. I didn't know that yeah, guy's yeah. name. He's, uh, he's the lead singer. He... Um, He's a big comic book guy. Oh. And for a while, I don't think he's still doing it. DC Comics basically gave him his own imprint under DC Comics called mm. Young Animal. And he wrote many comic books for them. Um, and they were very, very good. But one of the things he did was like Doom Patrol. Oh, yeah, he, that's a big, that's a show now. That's I don't a show, yeah. I don't know if it's canceled, but it's still on. Yeah. Brendan Fraser was in that. Yep. I've never seen it, but I know it's... A, very popular show, huh. very good show. He came up with the Doom Patrol thing? He didn't come up with the... the he just he wrote it, but he had his own series of it. Where they rebooted it, and he was like the writer of it. And he's done other... Huh. He's done other books as well. So if you're... If, if Instead of ending on a negative note with how bad that Archie book was, um, if you really want to read a comic book that is somehow tied to music. Right. Look for some of the young animal books by uh, by Gerard Way. It was it was it was very very good, especially the Doom Patrol, but he has like I said others. I think he did a, a Cave Carson uh, is another comic book character that right is uh, is unique and I think he uh, I think he wrote some of those. A very good book. He he's a very creative guy and I would just say, if, if that's what you're looking for, if you want to tie music to, right. to comics, take a look at some of the stuff that that Gerard Way has done for DC Comics. There's a number of books. He, he was big on Doom Patrol. Uh, I think he may have written... Uh, um, 
He may have, I'm pretty sure he wrote Cave Carson, which was also good. There were a few others, but he, uh, his brother also did a few uh, things. Uh, right. Mike, Mike Way, Mikey Way. Right, right, I right. I think he's done a, a few books where he wrote, check those out if you want to tie music and comics together. Yeah. And maybe not so much Kiss Meets Archie. Yeah. And PJ, I, I was, there's some things I want to ask you some questions about. Okay. But I want, I, I, uh, I, I was thinking because I wanted to participate in this section of today okay. and... I remember one of my favorite YouTubers talked about this. This happened maybe like two years ago. But have you ever heard of DC's Dark Knight's Death Metal? Oh, yeah, I have it okay. in the store. Oh, so, yeah, it's right here. It's so, fantastic. Right, so folks, what this is, is I'm, I printed it out. So I'm just going to read the uh, little press release. So yep. Dark Knight's uh, Death Metal. Uh, this is from the best selling team of writers Scott Snyder and uh, Greg and artist. Capullo. Yes, wow. Yeah. Launched in the United States in June. Uh, 2020. Yep. So, um, and then they released a uh, another sequel, Dark Knight's Death Metal, a sequel to the yep. Smash hit, uh, and uh, you know which changes the way DC universe and the, this. It multi- almost reboots the entire universe. It's yep. a very yep. innovative is, and creative yep. story. So it's the space- art's fantastic. Greg yep. Capullo, whoo, he's an yep. artist. And it's basically based like the Dark Universe, and this was a. Uh, they had a runaway hit villain, the Batman who laughs, which yes. I believe is like the Joker turns into Batman. So, so what happens is this um, in that story, Batman. Um, if I remember correctly, it's been a couple of years, but basically Batman goes a little too far. It's an alternate reality. It's yep. not like our regular Batman. Yep. But he goes too far. He kills the uh, the Joker. Um, what happens is the Joker is rigs himself for whatever, right. so that when he dies, uh, a toxin is released, and Batman breathes in the toxin, and it starts to turn him into the Joker. Oh. And so he becomes the Batman who laughs because the, he's got the Joker oh. in him, essentially. He becomes like a Joker. and it's the, the design for that character is just badass right he's got like spikes through his like yeah. almost through his eyes yeah. he's got it's mm-hmm. it's sick it's it's really a sick mm-hmm. look so the connection people well pertains to music is to i guess to help promote the uh the series mm-hmm. they had this thing was called uh dark uh dark knight's death metal yep and each cover had a band yep on the cover that yeah. i don't think it has any impact on the story no, no it was it's just, just covers cool yeah. covers so these are the bands that were featured on these covers of this series you had megadeth yep Ozzy Osbourne, mm-hmm. uh, Dream Theater, which I'm going to be obviously my favorite, <laughs> but uh, Ghost, um, Opeth, Lacuna Coil, and uh, Splatura. I'm not sure yep. if I always pronounce that name right, but which is pretty cool. I looked up the artwork. It's fantastic, and, um, isn't it? Yeah, and I just I said, oh my god, OMG! So I just love that. So if you're really, if those are one of your favorite bands, I definitely recommend you getting the comic book because those artworks are sick. Yeah, and the I mean, book itself, the storyline is really. Really unique and really, it's a fresh take on yep. things. Mm-hmm. There, there is designs where it's like Batman and Superman like rocking out on like heavy metal guitars. Right. You've seen them; they, they they have action figures of it. It's really mm-hmm. good. Um, it it looks like a death metal album. It looks yep. like that. That's what the that's what the story is designed to look like, and it's yeah, it's a it's a fantastic storyline, an important storyline, beautiful art. Um, the covers. What they mm-hmm. did with the covers was really cool, um, and it's almost like a throwback to the '90s in a way. Um, but they had like foil covers, so the covers look like they're made of metal. Oh, yeah, and some of them are a little bit embossed or whatever, so it gives you the feeling when you look at the book that it was printed like on a, on. Me- it's just a cool look. Oh, book. damn! Yeah, okay. and the storyline is dark, and it's edgy, and it's it's really mm-hmm. really good. And they have uh, there's like the Robin King they call them, but it's like the same kind of thing where it's. The the essentially the same like the Robin who laughs if you will it's that same right, yep, they look you. Jokerized and they look just demonic cool yeah it's really it's badass looking sounds interesting Greg Capullo did the art for a long time um, after uh, after McFarlane was done being the writer and artist on mm-hmm. Spawn um, Greg Capullo did the art for Spawn for a long time hmm. and if you're familiar with Spawn. You, 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 it's dark and it's, yes. it's right. Yep. That's the same art style he used on this book. It, it felt very reminiscent of that. But if you can picture the Spawn has a heavy metal aspect to the look and design of it all. Mm-hmm. It's that same kind of a feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. And my last thing, PJ. This is really. This is a, this. This is not a pop quiz. I was just thinking about. 
I'm like, what bands or artists could I see them making a comic book? And I'm just want to see if you agree, disagree, okay. or maybe, in fact, maybe you do know if these were turned okay. into comic books. My first one is, has Michael Jackson ever had a comic book? I I, <laughs> I didn't look. I, got, I, don't, like, I don't. I didn't Google anything. I'm just. I mean, this it's is possible. I mean, down. I don't think it's been anything where it would be tied into, like, right. a, a major storyline or mm-hmm. anything. But I am sure he's okay. done so much that there he's been featured in when I'm po- mm-hmm. almost positive. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, you think you think uh, that would be like let's say he was still alive or even even now you think it would be worth making a comic book about him like I think of that movie Oof. Moonwalker when he's like yeah. playing Joe Pesci well here's the thing with someone like a Michael Jackson um, musically <laughs> um, great and 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 maybe he did or didn't do anything we don't know right, I'm right. not going to judge the man he's gone I don't know um, I think. There is a place for him to be in comic books uh, right. in, a, in his in his prime, right? Right. If he was still around, it now, was like the '90s when that video game came out. Yeah, it could be exactly. a nice tie. Like, I, I don't know about now. Now, but. if he was th- his later years, or even if he was still around now, I, I don't know that it would work. Like, what would it be about? But I think right. there was a period of time where all of his videos had a almost a, a comic book yes. nature to them, with some sort of superpowers, or he turns into a car and all the like a rabbit shit. and all that stuff. Right. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, these are like other ones. I'm just curious. Maybe like, I have no clue, folks. I didn't do any research. Right. Things that came off the top of my head. Do you ever know if the Partridge Family ever came out with comic books? I believe they. I believe back in the day they might have. Yeah, mm-hmm. the Partridge Family. Here's a fun fact that you mentioned the Partridge Family. Right. This is crazy. Right, right, right. This morning, I was here in well, more of this afternoon. Whatever. I was here in the store, and I get a phone call. Right. And I answer and I'm like, you know, how can I help you? Cool kids, comics, and toys. And I was asked if I had any Partridge Family. Like memorabilia? Memorabilia or wow. product. Wow. <laughs> and then here you are asking me if the Partridge... Did you prank call me today? <laughs> <laughs> um, that's funny. Um, the next one, I, for some reason, I don't picture him doing this, but at the same time, I can, because he was somewhat vain right. as Prince. I don't believe I, he did. Okay. I, I picture don't him like, promoting that with like an album. Like, yeah. He's like saving the... Maybe he's like yeah. Purple Rain or something like that. The Purple Rain like comic right. book version of that yeah. movie. I put Metallica. I'm just curious. Do you know? Maybe like something to promote. I'm just curious. Um... I don't think they've ever had their own their own comic book or anything. Right. I th- uh, their music has certainly been referenced in, in a number of different things. Yeah. Uh, I think people have drawn characters inspired by their look. Sure. But I don't think there's ever been anything really Metallica based on them. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, Taylor Swift. Not yet, but it's coming because <laughs> she's everywhere. Um, and by the way, good for her for being everywhere. We we can yeah. all use a little more Tay Tay in our lives. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't hate on Taylor. Mm-hmm. I'm a fan. Uh, my my wife uh, is a fan of her. I'm not so much. I um, like fewer of her songs. I'm a, fan. I'm a fan. It's not my type of music, but she's mm-hmm. a talented girl. I ain't mm-hmm. mad at her. <laughs> um, Hannah Montana. Mm, I don't I don't believe mm-hmm. so. Maybe some Disney stuff. It's mm-hmm. possible. Spice Girls? Spice Girls. I mean, I th- there are cartoons with them in it. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know that it's actually crossed over into a published book, but right. there have been mm-hmm. cartoons and things that have featured them. Right. What about uh, boy bands? Sorry to cut you off. Like Backstreet Boys and Sync, that kind of crap. Mm-hmm. I could see... Backstreet Boys, no. And Sync, I think... Joey Fatone in specific, and sometimes mm-hmm. and Justin Timberlake also, they um they have been drawn into books. Okay, not, okay. Um, it's not that they've been a book about them, um, but those two um, have spoken about comic books and things right. like that in the past. Joey Fatone especially, and uh, and sometimes Mar- with Marvel comics more than DC, they'll uh, if they know there's a celebrity right that's big into their stuff. Some of the artists will draw that character into a book. Oh, and like I'm, a panel or somewhere? Right, oh, exactly. Cool. Okay. And my last one, have the Beatles ever had a comic book? Because you know they at one point they had tons of merch. Yeah. Like lunch boxes and um, toys. There was a comic book inspired by them. Gotcha. It wasn't them, but the um, the artwork, the, the characters, was very reminiscent of, uh, of like uh, Sergeant Pepper and stuff right. like that. Uh, it was not Beatles branded, but you could tell yeah, that it yep. was them. Sweet. Well, PJ, um, this was an exquisite episode. I'm not going to lie. I had a <laughs> lot of fun doing this with you today. And I recommend, folks, listen to New Blink, listen to New Stones. Check out, baby. Check out, if you're a Kiss fan, check out that. <laughs> yeah. if, you're, if you're a Kiss fan and you don't want to be disappointed, but you still want to 
read something, like I said, musically inspired, check out the Young Animal imprint from DC Comics, which is really, really unique, interesting stuff. And Gerard Way is uh, really a creative guy. So it was that's really worth the read. Yep. Mm -hmm. And if you're into some of those metal bands that I mentioned and you like comic books, you know, I'm not sure, maybe, who knows, maybe they have like posters of uh, those band covers from the Dark Knight uh, death metal series. So, yeah. He, he, Gerard Way, you know what else he wrote um, outside of the DC Comics thing? He he is the person who wrote the Umbrella Academy. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I am, I'm, I'm, a, I, this is breaking news for me. Yeah. Um, good for him. But, uh, yeah, folks, so take whatever lunch money you have left and buy these things. We recommend it. Invest in it. Um, you know the deal. Same time, same table. Have a good one, kids. Make good choices. Boys and girls, lunchtime is over. Please visit PJ and Mike's website, coolkidslunchtable.podbean.com, for more information. Follow the boys on all social media apps. Just search Cool Kids Lunch Table Podcast. Now get to class before you get to tension.